Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'd like to thank the organizing committee for inviting me to give uh, this talk. I'm very excited to be with you today and uh, to join the discussion after. I hope you can see my slides. Uh, my talk is going to be about ileus to obstruction, knowing the difference. I do have uh, one disclosure, and I am a consultant for Johnson & Johnson. And um, I will be speaking about clinical scenarios, as well as it goes through some definitions, etiology, and then management of uh, the two conditions that I'm speaking about. Sorry about the technical glitch. So my case number one is a 54-year-old male with multiple myeloma and pancytopenia. He uh, presented uh, early of this of, uh, of last month with perforated diverticulitis. There was um, actually stool in his belly. We took him to the operating room on uh, the 3rd of September of, um, of 2021, and we performed a laparoscopic Hartman. It went pretty smooth. Again, it was perforation. There was some stool in the belly. So postoperatively, he was septic. He uh, was in the ICU with an epi drip and, uh, and a liver drip. And um, however, he stabilized and his bowels never really opened up after. This is a CT scan of uh, his abdomen. Uh, on the 15th. So again, remember on the third, he had um, surgery and on the 15th, he had the CT scan. I don't know if I can play it again uh, for you. You can see that there was dilated bowel and then there's sort of a transition point somewhere higher up. Um, we then did a small bowel follow through two days after that. And uh, there was contrast going all the way, well, through the duodenum, and then it didn't get really much past that, and there was bowel distension further down. Uh, what's next? The other case I wanted to discuss is a 32-year-old male who had locally advanced rectal cancer. He uh, had an exenteration at Johns Hopkins in 2013. He then had a recurrence, unfortunately, and then in April of this year had a, a high sacrectomy. Um, after that operation, again, this is in April, within seven days, he had no bowel function had a CT scan uh, around the 30th, which is about 11 days out, that showed dilated small bowel, had an NG tube, uh, and did not open up at another CT scan that showed transition in the pelvis at this time. Um, how would you manage this? We started him on TPN, and uh, we sent him home. And really, postoperatively, he was never able to tolerate a diet. So question is, at what point do you uh, consider a reoperation? I'm going to go through his CT scans in the timeline. That this is going through a little bit fast, but again, this was in May, and you can see dilated small bowel everywhere, and then he has got this sort of lots of metal in the pelvis. Um, this is going to be in June, a month later. Again, he's not able to tolerate a diet, and um, you can see that um, the bowel is still sort of dilated, and I can tell you that the transition is here in the pelvis somewhere. And then he did not have surgery actually. And then in September, again, this is four months out, he comes in and he's now really uncomfortable and he vomits every day <coughs> and, his, and his bowel is really dilated this time. And again, the transition point is in the pelvis. So would you operate at this point? So um, I hope I could answer these questions at the end of my talk. By definition, ileus is temporary inhibition of gastrointestinal motility after surgical intervention due to non-mechanical causes. An obstruction is really a blockage or either partial or complete. Ileus, you know, it's very common. We see it all the time. It's probably normal up to four days and the causes are multifactorial. It's inflammation, some neural uh, reflexes, um, of opioids and neurohormonal peptides and some, you know, if you, patients have hypokalemia or other electrolyte disturbances that can contribute to it. Uh, what are the risk factors? Excessive manipulation, bowel loss, long surgery, anything that can give you more inflammation. Any post-op complications, such as an abscess, can also increase the risk of, uh, of uh, <clears throat> ileus use of uh, perioperative uh, opioids and uh, uh, high uh, IV fluid use post-operatively. Uh, what about obstruction? The most common cause is adhesions, definitely, but some actually hernias, you know, such as uh, uh, port site hernia postoperatively that can give you an obstruction that needs to be operated on. Volvulus and food bolus is much less common. 
how do they present? Really, they present in the same way. The patient is distended. They're unable to tolerate a diet. They might be vomiting. Um, I think the presentation is, is exactly the same between the two. A CT scan can distinguish between the two, especially if you have a transition point. It's much more suggestive of an obstruction. Um, however, most obstructions postoperatively are partial and do not need urgent intervention. If the patient is getting worsening pain, not improving pain, I mean, they'll be complaining about pain, and they have other warning signs like you know increasing lactate, decreasing urine output, et cetera, et cetera. I think most of the management uh, is the same. You put an NG tube, you minimize. Um, uh, you put an NG tube and you give them IV fluids and 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 hope for it to be resolved. How do you treat it? The, really, the best treatment is prevention. You need to minimize IV fluids, minimize use of opioids. This is for ileus, obviously. Um, minimally invasive surgery, if at all possible and, and um, use of ERAS pathway, which has become extremely common now all over uh, the country. And really, it, this is probably very difficult to say because you're going to go see the patient and they're going to look at you every day and they say, what's next, doc, is to do nothing. You know, give them, uh, replete their electrolytes, uh, put them in an NG tube, give them nutrition if and when it becomes important, uh, I would say around seven to 10 days postoperatively. If the obstruction... Um, does not resolve, then I would say six to eight weeks um, is the minimum to go back. And I would encourage a little bit longer patients. If the patient does not have blockage signs and it's extremely prolonged ileus, then that's really a sign of uh, severe small bowel dysmotility, which is not very common. In the immediate postoperative period, I would really discourage the use of prokinetic uh, leisure, um, medication because I don't think it would sort of uh, it would work at this point. Surgery should only really be considered, like I said earlier, if the patient's getting worsening pain, signs of sepsis or SIRS, white count that's rising suddenly, uh, lactic acid that's going up, uh, and or peritonitis. Peritonitis is very difficult to distinguish postoperatively if patients have had a big incision and, and, and they have incisional pain. This is a paper that was actually just published <clears throat> not long ago from the uh, Cleveland Clinic, and they looked at patients who were taken back to the operating room um, with postoperative bowel obstruction. And what they showed is really 91% of the 34 patients who were treated with home TPN, again, it's what I'm proposing is to be patient, send the patient home on TPN, uh, recovered bowel function without an operation at a, around 60 days. And if you went back early, uh, which was 27 patients, and they had a lot of complications, 20 bowel, 12 bowel resections, five enterotomies, three new stomas, two EC fistulas, and one leak, and one fascial dehiscence. So again, um, patience is a virtue. So this is a pathway that I propose for these, for these type of cases. You get someone whose GI function is not returned at four days, get a CT scan, put an NG tube, put them on some IV fluid for electrolytes. And two, three days later, they're not better. I would say small bowel follow through and only consider intervention surgically if they're, you know, the signs that I mentioned earlier are there, you know, worsening pain, lactemia, et cetera, et cetera. By about seven to 10 days, if they're not better, I would start with TPN. And within, I would say, two weeks, consider sending them home on TPN with no plan to re intervene sooner than eight to 12 weeks. In summary, post-op post ileus and bowel obstruction is a very common problem. It's really not easy to distinguish between the two. The manage, management is similar for both and um, uh, patience is a virtue. Once again, thank you for the opportunity to present.